No, we're not here to talk about the movie 300. This is just a representation of the current player base of GTA Online. What's up everyone, my name is DJCS, welcome to an all new Let's Talk. In this episode, we're going to be looking at what may very well be the end of GTA Online and how it got there. If you are new to my channel and you don't know what Let's Talk is, it is part of my channel where I talk about things going on in video games, entertainment, sometimes things going on in the world, and things going on with me. So if you like what you see and hear, please drop a like and subscribe, and as always, leave some comments below and let me know what you think. With all that said and done, Let's Talk GTA Online is dead. Dearly beloved, we are gathered here today to pay our respects to GTA Online. For four years it ran strong, with numerous DLCs that gave us some great content and some not so great content, but overall gave us a reason to keep playing. One of the best selling games of all time. It has probably made the most money in microtransactions of any game, but now it has finally been laid to rest. No, ladies and gentlemen, Rockstar has not officially shut down GTA Online, but they might as well have. With no DLC in sight, regardless of what leakers say, with no official word from Rockstar, as far as we know, there is no DLC coming out. Now, it may seem like I'm beating a dead horse here with my other videos about Rockstar dropping the ball with GTA Online and how Rockstar can save GTA Online, but this has been my favorite game since it came out in 2013. I've gone and played other games, but always come back to GTA Online. Why? Because of the constant updates they gave us. Now, with no real evidence of DLC coming out, there seems to be no reason to play and to grind. It has been three weeks since the last drip feed vehicle from the Doomsday Heist, and not so much as a wink or nod towards a new DLC. A lot of people thought the Doomsday Heist would be the last heist, but then Red Dead Redemption 2 got pushed back to October, and with the number of players and money being at an all-time high in 2017, many people, myself included, thought they would continue to push out DLCs. With no content coming out and some less than great bonus weeks, many players have officially moved on. To where? To the hottest game out, Fortnite. And why not? It's a free game to play. And while it does have microtransactions, you don't have to actually buy them. The items you unlock don't give you an advantage over other players. You simply unlock new skins, outfits, dances, or emotes, but not guns or anything that will really set you above other players. Whereas in GTA, yes, the items you buy microtransactions for can put you at an advantage over other players. Someone like myself who grinds in the game and works hard to get a few mil to buy one of the new DLC items, then there's those that buy shark cards and then they buy every item from the new DLC. And say I spent a few mil on a new business, facility, or whatever. They bought that, plus the newest few weaponized vehicles. Or someone who is just starting out and doesn't want to buy shark cards, is planning to earn the money to buy the items but has to deal with thousands of other players who have weaponized vehicles. In an article that came out today on SportsObserver.com, writer Trent Murray says that Take-Two Interactive has been falling since Friday, March 9th from $116.61 per share to $109.23 today. A 6.53% drop off. I honestly think it has been falling weeks before that. Also according to SteamSpy.com, GTA 5 peaked at almost 55,000 concurrent players on Steam on March 14th. In the same time frame, PUBG had almost 2,480,000 concurrents, Fortnite reportedly has over 45 million registered users, and PUBG has sold 30 million units. Both games generate roughly $1.2 billion in in-game and digital revenue. And that's just Steam. That doesn't include consoles. Now this isn't necessarily a fair comparison because GTA is an open world RPG style game where Fortnite is a PvP shooter slash survival themed game, kind of like a lot of the adversary modes in GTA, just better. But the issue with GTA Online is that it has gotten away from what made it popular. The story based missions, heists, and the customization that is involved with the characters and vehicles. Rockstar seems more focused on adversary modes and overpriced weaponized vehicles. There's nothing wrong with the adversary modes. Though I don't know a whole lot of people who actually play them, if I want to play a PvP shooter style game, I will go play Fortnite or Call of Duty. I played GTA Online for the story based mode, to get involved in missions, 
be part of a seedy underworld in Los Santos, but aside from the Doomsday Heist, they have gotten completely away from anything really involving a story in the game. Sure, when you first buy a hangar or bunker, there's someone there to give you monologue about it, but that's where it ends. The phone calls and text messages don't really count. The go here, get this method with little pay hasn't given people an incentive to play. I'm not going to go into details on how they can possibly save GT Online as they already did that in a previous video. I will leave a link in the description so you can go check that out if you want. I really want GTA to make a revival but at this point with games like Fortnite taking over it doesn't look too promising. Don't get me wrong, if they do come out with the DLC I will definitely be back to check it out. But many people don't have the passion for the game that I do. I know a lot of people who had the game but either deleted it from their console or traded in the game. Let me know what you guys think, let me know if you are still playing GTA Online or have moved on and to what game. Thanks for watching guys, my name is DJCS and I'll see you guys next time.